Hello everyone, I'm Mariah and I'm going to walk you through this presentation that touches base on patterning and draping. Throughout this presentation, I'll be discussing some definitions, some tools of the trade, showing you all what it looks like to work hands-on with patterning and draping, and then going through some really important safety procedures. have a really solid grasp on what patterning and draping are, I'm going to go through a couple of definitions. So, patterning and draping can be defined as two different techniques that are used in costume construction in order to make mock-ups and different garments. So, patterning is the technique of drafting garment pieces through taking measurements and manipulating fullness through a variety of different methods. These can include things like the slash and spread technique, the pivotal technique, and so on. Now with draping, it involves using a dress form, which looks like a mannequin, to actually pin fabric on and then manipulate that fabric in order to draft a pattern piece while it's on the dress form. So this can be done on a variety of different scales, including half scale, full scale, and so on. Both are integral to the design process of a costume and pose their unique challenges and require a unique skill set in order to be done correctly and efficiently. Anyone who is involved in the draping or patterning process must be well versed in measuring, understanding how to create darts, how to add or take away fullness through drafting, and so much more. The traditional draper or patterning professional will need a variety of different tools in order to complete their job. These are included but not limited to a tape measure in order to take measurements of models or dresses, Rulers are curved rulers, which are plastic or metal rulers that are used for measuring and marking lines on fabric, patterning paper, or hard surfaces. Curved rulers specifically are amazing for creating curves without having to freehand these intricate measurements. Pencils, which are the preferred method of marking when it comes to fabric and muslin. Muslin fabric, which is a lightweight material that is best used for drafting. It's super easy to manipulate and mark on, making it the perfect material to use when draping or patterning. Sewing needles and pins, which are crucial in any costume shop's toolkit. And then for draping, a dress form. And dress forms are what are used for draping. They can also be used in patterning to make sure pattern pieces fit. But in draping, pieces are pinned directly to the dress form itself. They come in a variety of sizes and be customized with padding to create different measurements and fullness. So for the last of the tools of the trade, we have shears or fabric scissors, which are incredibly important and are only to be used when cutting fabric. No other materials can be used with them because it'll dull the blade super easily. Then we have snippers, which are best used for cutting threads, patterning paper, and then a pressing iron. So for the hands-on portion of patterning and drafting, we're going to start with something called a pattern piece and all these different lines are where different darts can be. Now this is a dart and it's where we can manipulate to take away fullness. So it can be in a variety of different areas like the neckline, the shoulder, French darts, and patterning is just a way of manipulating this fullness in order to get certain style lines or to just take away fullness and put it somewhere else. When it comes to draping, you would use something that looks like a mannequin, which is called a dress form. Unfortunately, they're very expensive and I do not have one, but I did actually drape this on a dress form. And something unique to that is where you see these sketched out lines is where I actually pinned this piece of fabric that was just plain to her body and sketched out all of these lines. So that's the difference between the patterning I showed you with a blank draft of a pattern and something where I would drape it onto the dress form, manipulate the fabric with pins on the dress form, and then sketch it out to eventually put onto an actual pattern piece. Now for some really important safety procedures. So number one is be incredibly careful when using the pressing iron. It has steam, depending on if you're in a costume shop that has one that has a steam option. Um, they're extremely hot and can give you some really severe burns. So never leave it down on the table because you can burn the table and just be very vigilant when you're using the pressing iron. So for number two, when you're using the sewing machine, make sure you never sew over your pins. They can snap, they can break. If it's under pressure, it can fly off and hit someone. So just to be safe when you're sewing, take out all of your pins. Now, number three, no running in the shop. 
this seems pretty, you know, nonsensical, but never run in the shop and always wear closed toed shoes. So in case you do drop something on your foot, it's probably not going to cause as much damage to you. So now number four is no food or drink in the shop other than water or what's decided upon with your costume shop manager, because um, in order to keep the fabrics healthy and the environment really safe and clean and free of spills, we can't have any type of food or drinks around that kind of a space. So those are the top safety procedures that always need to be adhered to.